I'm really proud of you. Thank you, sir. How's a gutsy performance out there tonight? You took us to a national championship, but nobody, and I mean nobody, expected you to. And for what it's worth, I'm really glad you stayed four years ago. Thanks, coach. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, baby, we going to the chip. Woo. One more game, baby. We got this, man. Oh, yeah. Football is my life, man. But you got to stay grounded in what's important. So I got a little surprise for you. Isaiah! Ha-ha! <laughs> M. Looking good, Emily. Oh, and I'm loving this hat. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Is that magenta? Fuchsia? What color is that? Okay, hey, I bet he'd probably be good at, uh, off the board, huh? Yeah. Look, Emily has the best games. Okay. If you had a unicorn, would you want its mane to be purple or pink? Well? Hmm. Well, these are both tough, but good options. I think I'm gonna have to go with purple. <laughs> Purple. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, look. <laughs> you see, look, you don't you don't pick from the options given. Alright, the game is in the name. Off the board. Now nah, it's clicking. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, look, if I had a unicorn, I'd have a mane that matches its horn. Silver. Mm -hmm. I'd go with Onyx. Ah, uh, Onyx? <laughs> okay. I told you she's a pro. <laughs> hey, how are you? I thought that would. I'm Emily's dad. Hi. Can I talk to you for a second? She's too shy to ask, but Emily wanted to know if you could do something for her in the national championship game. Yeah, of course. Anything. She wanted you to throw three touchdowns. Three? I thought I said four. Four touchdowns. <laughs> is is that okay? Well, four touchdowns is a lot. Uh, yeah, but how can you turn down this face? Look at that. But I'll see what I can do. Yes. Don't don't worry. He'll do it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's great to see you again. Great to see you. Nice to meet you, Emily. You too. We're days away from the national championship game, and there is one big question on everyone's mind. Can lightning strike twice? Last week, we saw a quarterback with no game day experience lead his team to victory in the college football playoff semifinal. Kyle, is this kid good enough to win a championship? Nah, not at all. Is it? No, no, not that's no. it. But hold on. I don't think he has to be. And this, let me tell you what I mean. There is so much talent on that team on both sides of the ball. Manage the game. Don't make the big mistake. I think they have a real shot. I do. Kyle, we don't like managers of the game here at the table. Very boring, just like your shirt. I feel you, but I disagree. The team has a ton of talent, but they're going to need this dude to make some plays. They're not going to win if they hand the ball off 50 times. You two be nice. You, Peter Schrager, mm -hmm. do you think he'll rise to the challenge? I do, as, as long as the pressure doesn't get to him. Yeah, for real, he's about to feel that pressure. Listen, there's a lot of weight on this dude's shoulders right now. He wins this game, he punches his ticket to the NFL. He loses, and we'll see, I guess. And then if you're a coach, how do you handle this? Mm. What do you say to a kid that has so much to lose on that field? Hey, can I talk to you a minute? Yeah, sure, coach. You know, I know it's hard to shut out all the noise. And it's a lot of pressure. The only thing that we can control is what's right in front of us. And what's right in front of us is a game of football. Same rules as always. So you gotta take a step back, right? You gotta breathe it in. 
you find a way to appreciate this moment, this, this time with your teammates, take in the crowd. Man, you do that, and, and everything gets real quiet. All right, so breathe, take it in. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. I got you, coach. Right. Yeah, thanks. Good. Yeah, yeah. We crown a champion tonight here at Levi Stadium in Santa Clara for the college football playoff national championship game as we'll see the Miami Hurricanes taking on the Texas Longhorns. One game to decide it all. It's the College Football Playoff National Championship, and off we go from Levi's Stadium. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now here's a first and 10 for Miami. No gain on the dump off at second down. The Hurricanes, of course, a three-time national champion back in the 80s, 83, 87, 89. They then added two more for good measure in 91 and 2001, but they haven't held that trophy since. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. So trouble already here on their opening drive. This is third and nine. From the gun, Gregory. And this is caught by Jackson. They'll get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he can't. And he fumbled it. It's on the ground. And this will be scooped up by the defense. Well, he did what he's known for. He made the catch, then he turned into a runner, took the contact, and coughed it up. And all I remember as a player, when they catch the ball, when those acrobatic guys catch it, you have to make them pay sometimes. You have to put it on them, big tackle, knock the ball free, anything you can do to slow them down. Now a throw right side taken in here to start this drive. The catch and run, good for 24 yards. Well, that student section wasn't alive. They are alive and well now. That chunk play woke them up. It is starting to get really, really loud in here as this offense is on the move here in the first quarter. On first down, Smith. And Walker has it. Shreds the tackle. Now the stiff arm created some space initially, but he's taken down not long after. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two, wasn't able to. That is caught for a Longhorns touchdown from eight yards out. And the Longhorns have taken the early lead. Sometimes those tight ends are a mismatch. They found the mismatch there. And that's exactly why you want to drop those types of plays because coverage is just going to go to the natural guys, the guys that make the big plays on the outside. But you work your tight end into it, that's a tough one for a defense to handle. Tough. They couldn't handle it. They worked out for six. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Here's the Miami offense ready to go for their next possession. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. 
We always hear about empty possessions, but some are worse than others. So you can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense, but when you turn it over, it changes momentum, and when they take it down here and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. Now here's a pass on first down. It's knocked away and incomplete. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it. If you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. He was waving his arms, wanted the football, but he dropped it. And that reminds me of a story you told me from your days at Tennessee. We don't need to mention the other guy's name, but when he dropped an open pass and you blew coverage on, what did you say to him? Yeah, it was really And this throw will be intercepted. Picked off at about the 31. Well, they didn't exactly show patience there, did they? Just down a score, they come out firing right away and compound things by throwing an interception. They put their defense in a really tough spot. Now a handoff here to his running back. It gets by him, and now a little daylight. The 40. He's at the 30. 10. And he will score. Touchdown, Longhorns. They blitzed defensively there, but he was able to slip through that first layer, and then he was gone. I think they won the leverage game, didn't they? Yes. Right? They saw the blitz coming. That got to him a little bit, but they leveraged it perfectly and found not just a crease, a gigantic hole. And off he goes, and he's still going all the way to the end zone. So now after the touchdown, the Longhorns get ready to kick it off. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Hurricanes offense set to begin their next drive. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything. At least three points get that zero off the board. And yeah, they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 16 yards, a first down. I have to admit, I'm excited by that play call and the end result because this is a team that's down big early in the first quarter, and a lot of teams will just panic, abandon the playbook, and just start firing the ball all over the place. It's way too early for that. Stick to what works for you. Down double digits, and we talked about their game plan being both running and passing there. You're right. They're sticking to the game plan, get the ground game going. A lot of football left to be played. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game, because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. When you're down early, how do you get back in the game, maybe establish the run? I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one, and what I like about the message. And he's going to score. Touchdown, Hurricanes. An 18-yard touchdown grab. And his guys have made this a one-score game now. There are several elements to a well-executed screen pass. This one resulted in a touchdown. It had all of those elements. Hey, you're so right, because you really need the rush to almost get to the quarterback, almost get to the passer. Then you've got to get the ball thrown perfectly, whether it's to the running back, the wide receiver, whoever the screen guy is. And, of course, the blocking has to form in front to get him downfield for the touchdown. This is taken at the three. Room here to run. And he'll go out of bounds all the way down inside the 35. 
I know the special teams coach will not permit himself a smile here, but inside, he's glowing. This is what he practices for. This is what he schemes. This is what he watches tape to put himself and his team in a position to score points, an absolute dream return. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. Just beating the play clock, Smith. Under pressure, and he'll go down. They'll sack him on what ought to be the final play of this first quarter. Through one quarter, 14-7, our score. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Garden. It's the hometown guys with the football here to begin this second quarter of play. As they've got it with a second down coming up. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. There goes a deep, and oh, it'll be intercepted. Able to get there and pick it. Well, this was a 14-0 game not too long ago. Things were looking pretty good. And then you give up the touchdown on the last drive. Now the interception. So that's a lesson in trying to stay vigilant, isn't it? You have to stay on top of things. Can't relax too much, because as you noted, things change. Now they've got to go out there and get a spark going again and try and slow down this comeback. That'll go as a pickup of 32 on the catch and run. I know we love our jobs. And pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about it. The big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. 27 yards there, a first down. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him? Either fellow receivers or offensive linemen. That makes that play a really nice timing play. And sometimes it can break big. And that is caught. Touchdown, Miami. From 21 yards away. And his guys are an extra point away from tying this thing up. And when the quarterback drops and has a guy that wide open in the end zone, his eyes have to get just as big as grapefruits. Oh, without a doubt. Hey, this is the easiest throw you're going to get, and you're going to get the benefit of a touchdown on top of it. Make that throw. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Texas offense set to take over again. But Charles, we talked in the semifinal about Isaiah Street's brother, Ezekiel, lost due to leukemia exactly one year ago today. But since then, Isaiah's been active in trying to help those who are going through the same struggles his brother went through. He formed a real bond, in fact, over the summer with one of them, 11-year-old cancer patient Emily Atwood of Centerville, Texas. And we're told that Emily and her father, Todd, made the two-hour drive up to Arlington a week ago to watch their semifinal victory and got to spend some time afterwards with the All-American receiver and his new quarterback. And folks out there should see how Isaiah's face lights up when the discussion turns to the young lady. He calls him and the inspiration that he takes from her fight. It's really something special to see. He makes a point to call her from the locker room after every game and he says, listen now, she's not afraid to tell me if I do something wrong. She'll critique me in a heartbeat. But it's good to see a young man who wants to give back one who gets it, and Isaiah Streets certainly gets it. Emily, too, said to be watching from her hospital room. A surgery scheduled for today, and now she's got a receiver and a quarterback that want her to know that they are thinking of her, and of course, we're thinking of her as well, and wish her all the best. Absolutely. Now a first down throw, it's Smith. And he's got him, got his man on the end round, complete. And he's gonna get this down near the 20-yard line. 19 yards there on the catch and run. I think it all came together there. In breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. 
Well, he's broken off some big time runs here in this first half. Yeah, and let's just face it, when you go into a game, you think you've got the plays that are going to work, but when you actually get out there and they're starting to happen, your confidence rises, and he's running with terrific ability right now. That's going to set him back five yards. Go, go. Still first down. Ready. The delay of game, a costly one, as they're backed up five for first and goal. To throw a Smith. That is caught for a Longhorns touchdown. Darren Walker with his second touchdown here in this first half. And his guys have taken the lead. So now two touchdown passes thrown, and we talked earlier about the young cancer patient, Emily Atwood. She asked him a week ago for four touchdown passes. Heck, he's already halfway there. Yeah, Isaiah Streets relayed that story to us. It's a pretty tall task for a second career start. But the way he's looked these last couple of games, he's not phased by the request, is he? He's halfway there. This fielded at the two. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Miami offense ready to go for their next possession. And Charles, the way touchdowns have come so fast and furious for both sides in this thing, it's starting to feel a little bit more like maybe a tennis match in a football game. Yeah, I like your description there. Maybe we're sitting in a nice royal box watching this type of a game. But let's face it, right now, the way it's going back and forth, it's going to come down to who can get a stop. Brad, and all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a game considering the blitz that they just had against them. On second down now, it's Larson. So he got three of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. These two offenses have gone up and down the field so far in the first half. Finally, finally, I say, here's a stop on third down. On is the punt team now as this one sent away. And it's taken in at the nine. And now running right through it. A good return there, 17 Let's yards. Go. Go. And that will come the offense as they take over. The offense for the Longhorns getting ready to begin their next drive. Still more than a minute to go, so there is time if they want to mount something here. Not only time, but they have three timeouts at their disposal as well. So that changes everything that you're doing here. Without those timeouts, you can only work the sidelines, hoping to get out of bounds. Here, the middle of the field is still available because you can call timeout and regroup. First play of the drive, let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher, a really nice run. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. The good run on first down followed up by a not-so-good run on second down. Now let's find out they're going to stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would love to see some play action here. I say go with your best running play over your best block. They're needing only a few inches. They're going to line up to go for this thing on fourth down. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. Thought they might throw the football with a little chunk that they had remaining on fourth down, but they ran it, they got it. Able to get it done, he ran that play with conviction, didn't he? Understood he would get a little bit of help from his friends up front, but it was really on him to go ahead and make the power move and get it done, and that he did. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw down field incomplete. So second down and 10, once again, they'll go from the 40. Throwing again, Smith. And this is caught. I think he got that with one hand. And he will score. Touchdown, Longhorns. And they extend their lead, a little added cushion into the lockers. What a way to finish. Tremendous way. That's momentum that they carry in with them. Can they convert it and bring it back out to start the third quarter? Point after, up and good. What a story this would be. Texas one half away from a national championship. Hey, come on. 
Hey, you need to play better in the second half, all right? What? Hey, just give me the ball, all right? Let me do my thing. I agree. Got it. Hey, you know how much this means to me, right? Yeah, of course I do. Then make it happen. Okay, man. Just one half remains in the college football season as we begin the second half of this national championship game. This is taken at the three. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. The Texas offense set to take over again. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard, the ball comes out, but this will fortunately wind up out of bounds. They'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave them with second and a yard. I don't know about you, but I can hear and feel the sigh of relief all the way up here in our booth. That was palpable. The sideline, the friend there. No doubt about it. Ball goes over the sideline, able to retain. Well, he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he will score. Touchdown, Longhorns. There you go, Charles. Apparently, all she had to do was ask. How about that? His fourth touchdown pass in this championship game. Give her credit for asking. Give him credit for living up to it. And I bet they're both relieved that there won't be another game. She might ask for eight touchdown passes in that one. Just one half remains in the college football season as we begin the second half of this national championship game. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. Gregory will look to throw it. They're down three touchdowns to this point, needing to put something together as they have it first and 10. And incomplete crisis averted. Almost picked. Instead, second down. From the 21, it's second and 10. To throw again. Gregory. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off around the 41. And Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. Eluding the pressure right. Oh, it's out. Smith lost it. And it'll be a turnover. This is going the other way. When I see a play like that, I come back to risk-reward. I don't know about you, but is it worth it at that point, whatever you're going to pick up, to either take the hit, and in this case, lose the football. Well, should have gone down. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. On, on, plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is a quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. So, Brandon, we sat in with a lot of coaches, and when they talk about things they want to accomplish offensively, I'm not sure that sack and sack are on their play sheet. Now Gregory to throw. And the throw there going to be incomplete. And attempted a deep ball there. They didn't get it. But, boy, they're going to need a few of those to actually hit in order to get back into this game. Good thing they do have a little bit of time here still left in the contest. Decent-sized deficit, but not one that they can't manage. Pulled in at the 24. Pushing through tacklers at the 30. Sheds another. Now a late flag comes in as they got him down via the face mask, and that'll give him even better starting position. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. On 
A lack of discipline defensively on fourth down, and now that leads to a first and ten. Now Smith. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. Now the secondary's really struggled today, but that's a little bit of a measure of revenge, isn't it? And they just followed the basic rules. See ball, knock ball away. Turns into a nice play. No chance to get away there for Smith as he goes down. Well, it was second long, now it's third and even longer. They're going in the wrong direction here. Because they're moving exactly the way they want to, but you're exactly right. Definitely going in the wrong direction for the offensive guys. From the 50, it's Smith. And he'll hit his tight end, Walker. They do get 12, but they'll be marked short. And that leads to a fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. The Longhorns come up first and ten. Now a play fake, and it's Smith. Now a leaping catch, he's got it. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost his bread and butter is a good running back dive play. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. A gain of 13, it's a first down. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. Set him back five. That's it, baby. We gonna work. Still first down. Okay, the wait. delay of game backs him up five, first and fifteen. Now they'll run on the draw. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Without the previous penalty, that would have been a first down. Instead, it's just a gain of 10. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, put a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop it. That one, a first down pickup of eight. A lot to praise on this drive, obviously. I, I know you're seeing what I'm seeing. Those guys up front, they're getting it done. Doesn't matter what play is called. They are handling their business at the line of scrimmage and dominating right now on this drive. And he will take this in for a Longhorn touchdown from four yards out. And the Longhorns add on to that lead. Extra point attempt to come here. Brandon, is there any way you and I can join this quarterback in the zone he's in? He's absolutely feeling it. Touchdown after touchdown, throwing the ball. So now after the touchdown, the Longhorns get ready to kick it off. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Hurricanes offense set to begin their next drive. They trail here by 24 points. Got to get going soon, you'd have to think, as they come up first and 10. They turn to Larson here. And he quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll bring up a second and 11. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stump that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more. On second and 11 now, Gregory. And here is a leaping catch. He pulled it in. 
The reception good you for got, seven. You it's got, third down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Check it back or check it. There you go. Five. From the gun on third down, Gregory. And that will be incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Runs over it. A nice job on the return there, 16 yards. The offense for the Longhorns getting ready to begin their next drive. And Charles, at this point, it's all about game management. See this one out, and you're national champions. I think if you go back to the Marcus Washington injury and you ask the coaching staff, what percent chance do you think you have of winning two games and winning the national title? I'd say they cap it at, what, 15, 20 percent? That might be generous, and if you ask the students and the fan base, probably even lower than that, closer to zero percent. And that's what makes this performance definitely one for the ages. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Oh, he sheds himself free. And they work this well upfield across the 45. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. I know we're in the era of wide open football, a lot of spread formations, more space, but there's still a spot for power football. We just saw some of it right there. How about that one? Yeah, breaking the tackle, and you know, late in this game, he wants the football in his hands. He's had a good day. Just what you want on a first down run, call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Well, they'll take that every time with a lead, first down, fourth quarter, getting eight yards. You love that. They will take it, and you have to ask the defensive guys, why did you give it? I mean, you know the situation. You're down. That is caught for a Longhorns touchdown. A big play there. 45 yards. And this offense is running away with this one. And my friend, I think it's safe to say that this game is pretty much deceased at this point. It, it's taken a knee, so to speak. It is definitely this victory formation. Take the snap, take the knee, call it a night, you know, call it a game, call it whatever. I agree with you totally. I don't think there's much left to get except for those who want to run up the score. I, I knew this was over about a minute ago when you took your stat sheet and just flipped it over your shoulder in the trash can. Yeah, that's that's, my, yeah, that's similar to the guys cutting tape off yeah. right before the game's over. We know this thing's done. The Hurricanes now first and ten. Operating from the gun, Gregory. Throw left side complete. It's Simmons. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharp run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Now Gregory. Looking middle, and that's complete. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision, and receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. Looking to throw. Gregory, wide open receiver complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Give him 19 there as the drive marches forward. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. Back to throw. Gregory toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Now defensively, you look at the numbers. Another incomplete pass that we just saw, and they're under 200 yards passing for the game, so they've done their job on that side of the ball. Yeah, recently I was actually working a game where a quarterback had a streak. Of... And he's going to score. Touchdown, Hurricanes. Jermaine Joseph. Two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And his guys are able to strike for six. 
I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know. And oh, it's blocked. This is going the other way. And nothing but daylight ahead. He's at the 50. 30. Past the 20. And he takes it the distance across the goal line for two points. All right, you've had to put up with me in this booth. I'm going to try and be simple this time and succinct. It simply has not been their night. No, I think that fumble's kind of indicative of how this whole evening's gone, isn't it? Without a doubt. I mean, they've, they've tried, <laughs> but nothing has ever really taken throughout the game. That's why they're down so big. The Texas offense set to take over again. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now, defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. Smith. Flush to his right. And yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. They brought the blitz that time, and I thought they were going to get to him, but instead, he flipped it on its ear and ended up picking up positive yardage. I thought he was dead to rights, but you are exactly correct, sir. Able to turn that into a positive gain. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. Looking left side and he's got a man. It sparks. An eligible receiver downfield. Offense. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Still second down. Let's go now, let's go now, let's go now. 90, four. He's coming. Double up, double up. He's coming. Double up. 22 Jet Bomber. 22 Jet Bomber. Ready. On second down, here's Smith. He's going to go for a big play downfield. And he will score. Touchdown, Longhorns. I've got to laugh here, and I really don't want to because the old school in me is not happy about this score this late, not necessary. But this is Madden, isn't it? Yeah. This, is how, this is how it works. Rub it in. Have a day. I mean, wh what does it matter? <laughs> These guys who are playing in this game, there are no feelings Exactly. There. They don't have to face the guy. Well, they might if they're in the same room going head to head. But, <laughs> but that's the about virtual it. guys on the screen don't have to face each other after this one. In that case, run it up. This is fielded a couple yards deep. So how about this? Behind a quarterback who had not taken a snap in college football until nine days ago, the Texas Longhorns, for the first time since 2005, are national champions. Ladies and gentlemen, please turn your attention to the podium at midfield for the presentation of the College Football Playoff National Championship Trophy as we present your College Football National Champions, the Texas Longhorns. Jack Ford, talk about a long shot. And as a man who's known as the quarterback whisperer, and I suggest you trademark that, by the way, um, how are you feeling about your quarterback right now? I tell you, this kid's amazing. He worked around the clock to prepare for this game. i never seen anything like it. And I am so proud of what he's done and under this kind of pressure. Hope all you NFL scouts out there are paying attention, because this kid's special. Come on, man. You deserve it, son. Congratulations. Coach, this is you, man. This is great. Thank you. A perfect end to a too short season. You're leaving here a champion. I, uh, 
I, I, it's better than I ever thought it would feel. I can't even describe it really. It's just to be up on this stage, celebrating with these guys. It's, it's perfect. It's just perfect. It is a perfect end, but it seems like you put up a pretty good case that it shouldn't be today. How do you feel about that? <laughs> I, I think I'd give myself a shot. If the NFL comes calling, I'll pick up the phone. But this guy over here, this guy, take that trophy, man. Absolutely. Isaiah Streets, we are all aware of the loss of your brother and what it took to be here today. But can you tell us, in this moment, how you're feeling right now? It's a lot, lots of feelings, Taylor. Uh, I made a promise to my brother that I was going to... <laughs> you know, none of this... None of this would have been possible without this man right here. This dude came into an impossible situation. He's got heart. Love you, man. Hey, I love you, man. <sighs> See? This was for you, baby! Yeah! This yeah! Was for you. Woo, yeah! And let's go! A lot of emotions out on the field tonight. This is what football is all about. It's about getting hit and getting back up. And as you can see in a season that was characterized by overcoming, these guys did just that and won a national championship. Back to you guys. Right. <laughs> right. Okay, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, he's actually right here. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hello? Hey, how's it going? It's Emily's dad. Look, I, I know that you got a lot on your plate, and I, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I, I did want to tell you that Emily's out of her surgery, and she is doing great. <laughs> she got to see the, the game and everything. You have made a fan for life in her. Thank you so much for the kind words. Uh, please, have Emily stay in touch. I will, I will. Thank you. All right, bye. Take care. See you then, baby. <laughs> College football season's wrapped up, and the draft is two months away. Today, we kick off the NFL Scouting Combine. Over the next seven days, more than 300 college prospects will run, jump, catch, and throw for NFL coaches and scouts. Kyle, who's your player to watch? Okay, it's the mythical backup quarterback who just won a national championship. There's a guy who's played in two games. Two games, and we're saying maybe a third-round pick? Come on, the hype is unreal. Kyle, he did win a national championship. Yes, he did. It was incredible. Peter, eight quarters of football, third-round pick. Get out of here. If he blows up the combine like some people expect, uh -huh. he could be a first-round draft No way. Pick. No, Nate, no way. Listen, this isn't a particularly strong draft class for the quarterback position. And you know when that happens, teams get desperate for that QB, and they start to reach a little bit. Guess we'll find out soon.